I'd like to tell you a folk tale that comes from the low country of South Carolina and parts of Georgia. It's called Barney McKay, Dooley Doo, and Sue Boy. It's an old Sea Island folk tale. Once upon a time, there was this little boy and a little girl. They went to their mother and they said, Mom, can we like maybe go out in the woods and run around and play and just have a real good time? Their mom said, Absolutely not. I hear tell down in those woods close to the swamp. There's this old woman. She's a conjure woman. If she ever gets a hold of you, she's got you real good. You better stay close to the house. Well, the little girl, her name was Mary. She went over the ice box. She took out a big old jug of milk. And she poured some of that milk into a cup. She pushed it up under her mother's nose. And she said, Mom, legend has it here in South Carolina. As long as that milk stays white, we'll be okay. But if it turns that color of blood red, all you need to do is go outside and let our hound dogs out. Barney McCabe, Doo Doo Doo, and Sue Boy. And they'll come through the woods and rescue us. Now, what do you think about that? Their mom thought about it. She said, well, okay, you go out in the woods, run around, play, and just have a real good time, but be home before supper time. Be home before it gets dark. Well, before they left, John went over to the corn crib, and he took about an ear of corn, about a foot long, and shut it down, and he plucked out four kernels of corn. He blew on them four times. And he told his sister those were magical kernels of corn. And both of the children went into the woods. Had a pretty good time. They picked some blackberries, played hide and go seek. But they let one thing happen. You guessed it. They let it get entirely too dark to find their way back to the house. They were Instead of going towards the house, they went deep into the woods and got into the swamp. They saw this little light shining way off in the distance. They knew somebody lived there, so they followed to an old, dilapidated house. She knew somebody lived in there, but who was it? They went up to the door and they knocked. Nobody came to the door, so they knocked again. Then the door opened up slowly, and there stood a woman about five foot tall, all dressed in black, with a little bit of gold-rimmed glasses, hair all pulled back with a nose about a foot long with a wart on the end of it. And she says, well, <laughs> can I help you? John and Mary both stood back and looked at the old woman. Mary spoke up. She said, well, howdy. We, we have to be uh, kind of wandering around. Well, to tell you the truth, we're lost and a little bit hungry. And we're just hoping you'd have something to eat, but you probably don't have anything in this little bitty old house. And we're sorry to bother you. We're just going to leave you alone. <laughs> and bye. Well, before they could get gone, before they get off the porch, the old woman opened up the door and she said, well, just come on in. I've got plenty of room for you and plenty of food. And she brought them inside. She shut the door and locked it up good. She took them over to the supper table and she fed them. And she fed them. And they ate. And they ate. And they got full. When they finished, Mary said, Boy, I tell you what, this food is real good. You've got to send me that uh, recipe for that apple pie. And I, I tell you, we were going to ask if we could stay here to the night, but you probably don't have a whole lot of room in this little bitty old house, and we'll just go on and leave you alone. <laughs> Bye. The old woman stood up, stood in front of the door, and she says, <laughs> Got plenty of room, just stay the night. Just take those 13 steps up the top of the log, and you'll find your little bed up there. You can just lay your precious head so down, and I'll call you in the morning time. Now run on. John and Mary didn't know what to do, except to do what they were told. So they went up 13 steps to the top of the law, and they found that bed. They got the bed and covered up, but they didn't go to sleep. They just laid there and listened. What they heard was this. John said, Mary? Mary said, what? You hear that? Mary said, I do hear it. I don't know what it is. Why don't you get up and go downstairs and see what it is? And John said, I ain't going nowhere. 
But he looked down on the floor and he saw a little light shining through the floor. So he got down on all fours and looked, peeked through a little crack of the floor. And he was looking at the kitchen. And that old woman was sharper than a butcher knife about a foot long. <laughs> John looking through the crack of the floor, he said, <laughs> uh oh. He told his sister, she better take a look. She got down on all fours and looked. She got back up, looked at John. She said, I tell you what we ought to do. We ought to do it right now. John says, What? She says, <laughs> Let's get out of here. Well, they knew they couldn't go down the steps because, well, the old woman might be coming up the steps with that sharp butcher knife. So they went over to the window and they knew they couldn't jump from the window because they were up too high. They might fall and break something. That's where John took out one of those pieces of corn I was telling you about a while ago and he tossed it out of the window onto the ground. And when it hit the ground, in that very spot, a ladder sprang up from thin air all the way to the ground to the window sill, and they knew they were going to get away. Yay! That's when John said, wait a minute, i got a good idea. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. He slid down the ladder and went over to the pumpkin patch because it was that time of year. Brought about four huge pumpkins, quickly tossed them up to his sister. Sister caught the pumpkins, placed them in bed, and covered them up. So it sort of looked like the two children were still in bed. Then she tiptoed over to the ladder. She slid down the ladder and joined her brother to get away from that old woman, get away from that old house, just to get away. By that time, that old woman was coming up the stairs with that long, sharp butcher knife. She saw those lumps in bed. She went over and she said, Wee! <laughs> Stuck that knife in those pumpkins, pulled back the covers, and there was nothing in that bed about a mess of pumpkins. She was mad, red in the face mad. She went over to the window. She saw the two youngins running from the house. She slid down the ladder with that long, sharp butcher knife and started chasing them around the wood. <laughs> well, they kept running. She kept getting closer. John had to do something, so he pulled out a little piece of corn and dropped it to the ground in that very spot where the corn hit. One of those long leaf pines started growing real fast. The two children were quick enough to grab hold of the first limb and ride that tree all the way up to the very top, about 100 feet up. The old woman stood at the base of the tree with that bush her knife and she said well I would climb up and get you but I have a better idea and she took that knife held it like an axe and went a chipping and chopping chip on old blog and chip on a new blog yeah chip on old blog chip on a new blog well John and Mary knew they had to do something so John pulled out another piece of corn that was his third piece and dropped it to the ground and back at the house their mother looked at the cup of milk and it turned blood red. She knew something was wrong. She went outside. She called for her children to come home. She said, John, Mary. But they didn't answer. So she went over to the dog lot and opened up the lot and let out Barney McCabe, Doobly Doo, and Sue Boy. And they come out running. Oh. Well, they ran around the house about seven times. Oh. Ran around the big live oak tree seven times. Oh. Meanwhile, back at the tree, that old woman was still chipping and chopping at it. About ready to bring it down. That's when John and Mary sang out for the dogs to come through the woods and rescue them. They sang, Barney McKay, Dewey Dewey, and Sue Boy. Your master's calling you. Oh, Master Bathwood's coming on time. Master Bathwood's coming on time. Master Bathwood's coming on time. Come in. Oh. Meanwhile, back at the tree, that old woman was still chip on old blog and chip on new blog. Well, the tree began to pop. It began to sway began to fall. John had to do something, so he pulled out his last piece of corn and dropped it to the ground. 
And when it hit the ground, that tree just slowed down and let the two children off. Well, quickly, they jumped, went down this path that led to this bridge that went across this creek. But the bridge had been washed out by a previous storm. They fell into the water, and they floated over to this sandbar, which is an island out in the middle of the creek. They couldn't get off. They were stuck. The old woman, she knew what to do. She took that butcher knife. She went up under beneath the bridge. She started tiptoeing on these old rocks and stones over to the sandbar. Well, quickly, the two children cried out for the dogs to come to the woods and rescue us. They sang, Barn McKay, do do do, Sue Boy. Your master calling you. time the old woman was on the other side with that long sharp butcher knife getting ready to bring it down when Barney McCabe and Doo Doo arrived. Sue Boy arrived at the bridge. Barney McCabe dove to the air, grabbed the old woman by the neck. And she went, Ugh. Sue Boy got her by the ankles and Doo Doo got her by the behind. They took her out to the water and tossed her in. And she went a bubbly and bubbly down. And that was the end of that old woman. End of this story, and end of this fancy banjo play.